Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so I want to, man, I'm like shaking inside, it's fucked. So on behalf of Fort Houston, myself, Alex, Thad, and my damn dude, Luke. We, I love you. I want to thank you guys again for being here. And it just, this is something different and something that I don't think exists in this form. So I feel really good about that as far as innovation is concerned. And um, Alex, so we're getting it together. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do a meditation together. And if that's something that you guys, it's some of you feel uncomfortable about, perfect. So I'm asking you to be, I'm asking you to be with me while we do this meditation and be with each other so we can get out of up here. So we can get lower into our bodies so we can just feel more open and stable and comfortable. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna sit down. You can hear us talking and fumbling and making mistakes. And that's what makes this shit perfect. <laughs> God, man, that shit's sweetened for a second. Like, this is perfect, guys. <laughs> All right, so palettes, palettes, water, paint. Now hang on. Like I told everybody in the episodes, the earth tones you have to shake because the emulsifier doesn't, um, <laughs> sucks, doesn't fucking, that's where it is, doesn't uh, mix very easily. So just shake the hell out of it. And we have brushes over here. Um, there's brand new brushes courtesy of Jerry's Artorama. It's fucking awesome. Artorama. Yeah, Artorama. Art Artorama. Artorama. So we're going to get going. And just let this be awkward for a minute. Let's be awkward, bitches. <laughs> bitches. Hey, what's the Check rules with this hammer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put the hammer back, oh man. My God. No, but why? Because you're not going to beat the shit out of that. Ask for why? For, That's ask for forgiveness. Weird. Not permission. Okay. Weird. <laughs> Elizabeth. Whoa. Oh, sorry, guys. It was just. She's got to be different. <laughs> well, shit. We're exploring, bro. I know, I know. So we're going to get back to you guys in just a second, so just chill out. I know my shapes. Oh, I thought that this was tape. Tape, damn it. Yes, over on that table behind the easel where Thad is. Yes, they are. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, yes, 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 yes. Oh, frick. So tonight we're trying to understand how we're going to paint in a group. And talk at the same time. <laughs> Dang, you Did you I mean? introduce us? Is there going to be like a timer that goes off when we all shift over one canvas? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd be pretty good. <laughs> That's collab. Maddie. Yeah, what's up? Uh, okay, let me start this real quick. I sent a video to everybody uh, a few days ago asking them how they can experience increase experiences of awe and wonder. And then the other part of that was... Um, what are enemies of learning? And enemies, enemies of learning are things that prevent us from progressing into the future and having different opportunities to experience different ways of thinking about ourselves. Okay. So then friends of learning would be the opposite of that, the thing that allows us to entertain possibilities and understand how to more greatly progress in the future. So with that said, Maddie, I'm just curious how you experience awe and wonder. Uh, man, I was thinking about that earlier. I mm -hmm. feel like um, for me, it's in, it's in moments when I don't expect it. Mm -hmm. um, I saw this meme that was about um, this like kind of decent sunrise 
<laughs> and, and it was like, oh, this is what you see on vacation and this like mm -hmm. gorgeous sunrise. And it's like, this is what you see when you're walking out of the grocery store. Ah, that's and, good. Uh, and it's so true because we, we try to, as humans, like we try to like go and seek out things to experience these mm -hmm. like grand things. But oftentimes it's when we don't expect it that things come. Yeah. And when I think the, the one of the most, some of the most wonderful things that I've discovered or written or anything like that in mm -hmm. my life have been in moments when I wasn't trying to make it happen. Got it, dude. You know, so yeah. I think that you awe and wonder, that comes from, uh, from allowing it to happen rather than forcing it to happen, cool. I guess. Yeah. Is there something that, that recently you've experienced that you felt that interaction with yourself and, and, and um, experience a, experiencing a greater possibility of how you, how you come into being with those things? Like something personal? Uh, yeah, dude, if I cry, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, wonderful. Yeah, my wife and I lost our dog about, uh, I don't know, a month ago, maybe mm -hmm. yesterday, a mm -hmm. month ago yesterday. Damn it. I think that pain is, is more important than we want it to be. Yeah. Right? And so... That's why we get addicted to things. Yeah, totally. We had Maverick for 15 years. Whoa! So he was all, that's all that we knew, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I think that... It brought, us, it brought us closer, it allowed us to connect on a deeper level. After mm -hmm. you've been married for 15 years, you don't really feel like you can connect any deeper mm -hmm. than you already have. Mm -hmm. And it takes, it takes things like that to experience connection on a deeper level. And mm -hmm. I think, so I think that pain, yeah. pain is, is, is an important thing. I saw something the other day, it said like, life is not about, um, you know, like experiencing the, the, the best moments. It's about feeling everything. Yes, 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 yes. And that's so yes. hard for me. I'm, uh, for, I don't know if you guys do Enneagram or not. I'm, I'm an Enneagram six wing seven. So I'm like driven by fear. Okay. Uh, but I am always, I want to be happy and avoid pain at all costs. Got it. Right? Got so, it. so for me, that's the last thing that I wanted was to experience pain, to mm -hmm. need to experience pain, to experience something greater. Oh, um, but I think, yeah, we're in the very beginning stages of it. I don't know what's going to happen from here, but yeah. I, I do know that my wife and I have gotten closer from it. Got it. <clears throat> I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Brian. Brian, how you doing over there, bro? Who, me? Me, yep. Brian? What are you ripping on? Uh, I mean, I'm just getting some... Tight. It's getting some bass down right now. Some vibes, if yeah. you will. Okay. Brian. So what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> when did you experience the, the deepest change to date? Yeah, no, so I... Uh, <laughs> fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got, I got really fucked up, man. I got, I got I really uh, sad and I had to work on um, digging myself out of that, you know, mm -hmm. wherever, wherever that was. And um, kind of, you kind of start to, when there's that big of a contrast so quickly, you almost kind of feel crazy. Like a break almost. It was a, yeah, it's yeah, a break. Totally, I mean, totally. you, like, like just experiencing that, I mean, literally, mm -hmm. like visually, your world around you looks different. Yeah, like it goes yeah. from looking very bright and colorful and beautiful to sort of dark and scary yeah. and, yeah. and um, yeah, just sort of ugly, mm. but scary mostly. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah. And, uh, so, but it's kind of, I don't know, the, the way, again, what I was talking about, you're, you're, you're still technically moving forward. Even if you're like falling back on your ass, you're still mm -hmm. progressing. I guess, I don't, yeah. You're still moving. Yeah. You know, you're mm -hmm. still working in a, at least time-wise, you're mm -hmm. working in a, in a linear fashion. Like so. trying to work, work the problems out. Is yeah, okay. yeah. Um, it was it was confusing because you, you you start to make all this progress, you start to do all this work, and you can get to a point where I thought I had a lot of things figured out. Yes. And then I got knocked on my ass so hard that I was like, oh, I don't I don't think I have any. Like I don't know anything. Got it. Like God, literally anything. Gift, even man. even the yeah. most like simple things. Mm -hmm. It was just like I can't even pretend like I know anything at all. It was it wow. was really scary. I really like your piece right now. Oh, thanks, dude. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, I think I was painting Maddie for a second. Guys, Where sorry. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I just my had God. to. I just had to. It was a thing. Oh, had my to. God. <laughs> Continue. It's too good. <laughs> Luke, what did I tell you? What did I fucking tell you, dude? It's fine. I can <sighs> estimate effort. Oh, my God. Okay. Right, Brian's over here in it. <laughs> 
Donaldson's no, he, like, but there was fuck a, all this shit. There was a small fucking break. You're right, and I found you're right, it. you're right, you're right. Okay, but that was oh. very profound, and I really appreciate your vulnerability. I love it. I love it. I love it. Brian, do you, do you, do you now look at those times as a gift? Well, Not I'm, so still, fast, <laughs> I'm still working through those times. Got it. But, I Got mean, it. if you, I don't know, I sort of equated it to like an exercise, you know, if you're doing like mm -hmm. a... You're like doing like demons? a bench press oh. or something. Wait, what? Demons. Not exorcism. Hey, man. Man. <laughs> no. I had that shit in church, man. Maybe, Fuck dude. That, man. I don't know. I didn't try and... Copy that. I didn't try <laughs> and... Uh... Dude, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. Um, I was... I but was just like, joking. like if you, if you think about like, you know, when you're working out or something, there's like the, the phase where you sort of like come down. Yeah. So it was like a mental bench press sort of. So you're kind of like coming down and you got to like break a little bit before you push back up mm -hmm. no, so it's it. sort of like a mental exercise but it's fucking hard sometimes man yeah felt dude. like i i i pulled a mental hamstring for a little Oof. bit that's a motherfucker too i pulled i was running in, in uh, when i played football in high school i f hated playing football you know why because i didn't like to get hit i was like i like the smashing pumpkins i'm trying to get into my feelings and <laughs> paint and well not paint but like write and like where are you at, mom? All this stuff, you know what I mean? And then I was running, doing sprints, and I pulled my damn hamstring. I think I tore my hamstring, and now I'm dealing with it because I'm 44 years old, man. Yeah, I pulled my hamstring God. before. I had knee surgery, I had ACL surgery. Did that, did it work out good? I mean, it's, I can walk now, Copy. but they had to, they pulled a piece of my hamstring tendon out to replace my ACL. makes my butthole clench up, I know, dude. doesn't God, it? God, man, that I know, sucks. dude. How did, it, um, how did they do that? It's I don't science. know. I was I was asleep. I didn't see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hell yeah! He but ready. they did it. Look how cool this. But is. you can see it. Cool. You can see it. Like there's like a can gap. There's a gap in the back of my leg. I was about to ask if we could see. <laughs> no, you can see it. They like Kim Kardashian. Dude. I didn't know it was going. That was gonna be yellow. They Kim Kardashian me. <laughs> yeah, like they took. Who is that? Oh my good, Donaldson! Let's bring it over to you, man. Here we go. I'm like dying to talk. Yes, I know, and I do appreciate that because I, I had to. I had to hit my canvas with a hammer. I was like, <laughs> I need attention. I see parts of myself in that <laughs> man, I'm so I get it. I'm the real star of the fucking show. <laughs> Look what I fucking tell you, dude. <laughs> just oh kidding, my just god! Kidding. If you spot it, you got it, man. Well, no, can I tell you a secret? It's I... not a secret. But um, <laughs> yes, ma'am. Ma I had this thing. I was like, you, it's fine. Okay. I was like, I'm going to just be real fucking transparent and honest. Yeah. And I, I mean, I always am, but you know, I was just like, mm -hmm. let's just fucking let it rip. But it's funny. Cause I was like, I think that I'm going to be conflicted. Mm -hmm. Like I have two, I have a lot of people that live inside of me, but then there's like two, there's one person that's like, I want to be a deep mm -hmm. listener. Mm -hmm. I want to be present. I want to fucking listen. Yeah. I just want to like drown myself in listening. Is that how she sounds? I, 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 okay. Maybe, maybe. Cool, cool, cool. And then there's this other bitch who's like, I'm the star, I am yeah. the star, and no one's better than me. And like, yeah. that's a that's a fucking real competition between those two bitches. Come you on, know man. what I mean? Don't get fucking paint on me, man. This is Ryan Thomas' shirt, man. Dude, it's dry. Trying Settle cool. down. Settle down. Oh, okay. Dude, who the fuck wears some shit they don't want to get paint on? Ryan Rado, Maddie Come Mullins. On. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, it's cool. <laughs> that was aggressive. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Uh, what, what deep, profound question do you want to ask? I mean, I want ready? you to ask me one. Huh? No, no. All the right. listener's not here right now. Wait, what? Oh, oh, she's not. She gone? Yeah. Okay, that's the cool. The fucking, like, Betty Davis. Like, what's that Who's movie? Who's Betty Davis? You guys, who knows the movie? Yeah, no. Who said that? What the fuck? She's kidding? got big eyes. But are you? There's are that, you but do you guys me? know the movie, the one where she's like, she's is like she an the, aging silent film star. Is she the pinup girl? An, what's that? Sunset Boulevard, right? Sunset fucking Boulevard, and she comes down. Do you have you guys seen it? Who are you, millennial trash? No, like fucking god, they paid to be here. I don't care. This is what they're paying for. Okay, Sunset true. Sunset Boulevard. She comes down the steps. Fuck yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's fucking <laughs> right. She comes down the steps. <laughs> well, let me do it. No, don't do it, man. She's wearing fur. She's like 160 years old. I'm she's dying. like she's like basically like Madonna nowadays, right? Daddy and Bavis. she comes down the stairs and she's Daddy like, Bavis. I'm ready for my close-up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh Y'all at least watch that part. <laughs> Ryan, what's the profound question? Oh shit, man. Let me look it up. 
I need to be profound. I we need to this. balance this out. I'm hating this right now. No, I'm playing. I'm kidding, man. I'm kidding. I just, I was just real extra. Now I need to talk about my pain. Let me see here. Uh, hold on. What's your, what, like literally, like, hey, you got to look at me. Okay, yeah. Deep listener. Here, here we go. What is your favorite fruit? Dog, Donaldson, I'm not fucking around, man. What is it? Thirty dollars well spent. I like. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm, a, I'm just like a big fan of fruit in general, dude. You're not? No, I like. I, I like want to know. All fruit. Except First one fruit. that comes up. What is it? Literally, I just thought like my instant answer was like all fruit. Like this bitch loves fruit. This bitch loves fruit. I believe you love fruit. Wait, what yeah. a, do you want me to talk about fruit? Watermelon fucking. Okay, done, done, thank like, you. Answer. Yeah, no, done. that's not the answer. Blueberries fucking tart, round and small. Raspberries fucking uh, filled with joy. <laughs> fucking cherries, I swallow the pits. Fucking, no, you don't. Yes, I do. They come out? No, yeah, they do. Okay. Yeah, actually they do. It's good stuff. They do. Poopies, that's what I say to my, I have a 16 month old son. Yeah, and they don't kill you. <laughs> cool. Can I tell you something? I want you to. Just on the subject of cherries. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty good subject. Well, no, this is just something that I want to say, and I think it opens up with, you know, your box inside the box inside the box. Yeah. I think this opens up a topic. Yeah, please do. So I, I eat cherries, and I swallow the pits, and I've swallowed the pits since I was a fucking child. We had a cherry tree in my backyard. Tight. Right? You live in Michigan? Uh, California. Tight. Yeah. Okay. And whenever I tell that to the mm -hmm. world, like to the internet or whatever, mm -hmm. I get all these bitches that are like, Use that bitch word a lot, man. I, I love it. using that word. I'm not going to lie about it's it. It's fun to say. I, I, just do. I know. It's I'll my get, trend right now. I'll get but murdered. people will say, they'll, they'll like message me or write comment and be like, Elizabeth, if you can't eat cherries, you'll die. <laughs> and I'm literally like, bitch, I've eaten cherries my whole fucking life. Why do you got to cuss so much? Because I love it. It's okay. fun. Everyone should do it. And I'm like, bitch, I've eaten cherries my whole fucking life. Yes. Who are you to tell me that cherries are going to kill me? One You're person not, did this or two or three? Like a lot, like a lot of people. And yeah. anyways, my point is... Three people. My point is, is that motherfuckers will like, they love to tell you how to live your life. Yeah, totally. When they're not living your life experience. True. Yeah. And it makes me mad. Okay. Fucking right. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks. Good fucking, that's great. Thank you. But especially like I'm a person who's like I wild out on the internet a lot, and it's like just so weird that people feel the need to like, you know, like somebody wrote, you know, the thing. I was in the snow. Yeah, I loved it. I'm gonna fill you guys in. I went in the snow in my bikini. I made the news. It was a fun time. And then like a lot of people were like, "You're gonna catch a cold," and I was like, "You do not fucking own my body." How do you know if I'm going to catch a cold? Like, you, you're going to catch a cold. Get out of here. <laughs> and you haven't caught a cold. No, I'm fine. You're feeling great. I feel yeah. better than I ever have. I feel Wim Hof, dude. I love it. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. Th that's all. Right, let's talk to Ryan Thomas real let's quick. Let's talk to him. Oh, man. Okay, Ryan Thomas, I want to tell you that... Uh, see, you got to think of things on the go, and it's like... I think I have all these things that are, that are stored up and questions and all this crap, but I don't. But they show up. And I wonder if I, I, wonder if I did this on mushrooms, how good it would be. <laughs> but awesome, I'm, sweet, love it. Fuck I'm yeah. like drug-free as a motherfucker. Yep. Just so you guys, like deeply fucking drug-free. Okay. Cool. Okay, Ryan Thomas, I want Ryan to tell Lando. you something about your work and how it's influenced my work. Can I do I that? I told Ryan to chill tonight, dude. I was like, don't Wait. show everybody mm -hmm. up. What do you, I didn't catch what you said. We were having a conversation while you were, uh, I guess, meditating. God, Sorry. And uh, he was just giving me confidence in this whole process. Oh, so, because you're, you felt, you're, you're feeling like this is kind of stressful. Kind of. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Cool, yeah. cool. Is it, you feel more introverted in general? I guess. Okay. And this is the first time you've been in this scenario in how long? I don't think I've ever been in this scenario. No, right, right. Yeah, Excuse yeah. me. Like ever. In public, in front of people. You t told me earlier when it, what the last time it was. I mean, I think the last time I was in front of people was like church or something like that. Like long, second grade, long, you said? Second grade, long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> that, and that's probably how I would have liked it. Kept it. <laughs> Why'd you do this? Uh, I really had fun the first, when we just did the, the video. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I guess I kind of surprised myself, or you, you kind of surprised me on how, how good of a time it was. Hell yeah. I was I glad that I did it. Uh, 
obviously being nervous for this, but I, I think I'll be glad that I did it afterwards. Cool. Hell yeah. yeah. When did you start tattooing? Um, 14 years ago. 14. Oh, shit. Yeah. That. Okay. That's cool. I love your tattoos. I got one. Thank you. Yep. I'm wearing your damn shirt right now. Yeah. Yeah. Just give me a hug Thank or something. You. I appreciate it. You're the yeah. pixelated yeah. one. Yeah. I am the pixelated one. Yes. Why were you pixelated? That's a great uh, question. I knew this was going to come up. Hell yeah. And I don't know that I really came up with a, with a great answer. Um, I mean, no answer is still an answer. No, it's not. How do we know it's you? Right. Ooh. That's great. Um, Ooh. That's cool, Aaron. I think, Ooh. I don't know, I'm kind of like the anti-selfie, anti-self-promotion mm -hmm. when it comes to my, what I look like in my face. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I want people to recognize what my tattoos look like. Oh, that's cool. I don't oh, know yeah. if that kind of oh, yeah. transcends. Yeah, dude, you want to be known with... for your works, not your fucking body. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I well, I mean, I, I don't think that's the scenario, <laughs> but <laughs> somewhere, along those, yeah, somewhere along those roads. Tell yeah. her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. And then I, I think I did it like once and it was funny. Mm -hmm. And then it just kind of became a thing. And it just, oh, doing the blur thing? Yeah, the pixelation of my face. There is a fate. serious mystery involved. Is it? Yeah, dude. It keeps it, it. No. I mean, that's definitely not why I why I do it. I think it's just. Really uh, yeah, I want people to see the work and just recognize the work. I don't really care if you recognize anything else, just the work. Fucking awesome. Fucking awesome. Nicole Atkins. I want to tell you a story about Nicole Atkins, and make it perfect. We tried twice. To, and Nicole, we had a badass conversation, I felt. We did. And something, Luke, where are you at, dog? Luke, are you filming or not? No, I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. It kind of goes with you. the story. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Luke, where are you? Um, I was talking about um, Nicole and us doing the episode. And do we, do we, we did the one and then wanted to do the live one, and it was. I made a mistake and had it too close to the time. Right. Okay. But then we did a we did an episode with Nicole, and fucking we were riffing. Nicole, I felt we energized after that. I did too. Thank you. Hell yeah. So we did the we checked out the audio and stuff like that, and uh, my audio was fucked. So that's the story on that. Nicole's not been on the show yet. Now she is. Just I'm lives here. A really good story. What? Just lives here. Yeah, it does. You know. In my fantasy file memory right. box. And now you're here with all of us, Nicole. You said you are you you from New Jersey? Is what you said? Yeah, I'm from uh, Asbury Park, As, New that's Jersey. That's cool as hell. Wow. And God, man, the I'm Jersey sorry, Shore. Man. It's nothing like the actual show, but it is. Yeah. <laughs> I love that, man. All I've the been tourists come for the summer, and that's what we <laughs> that's what we have. It's kind of awesome. Is the term Guido? Where does that come from? Guido. Well, it's, you know, like it comes from like Italian styled people mm -hmm. instead of Italian. Like freaking hair up and all yeah, gelled up style. and shit. Yeah, style. That's tight. You know, like a club kid or a, um, I don't know, a prairie person. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, you know, like people that like to wear like prairie dresses. That's a Guido? Gu no, gu uh, I'm saying it's oh, like I that. See. Like Guidos like to wear gold chains and tan and, and stuff. And like we used to always like... In the summer, like, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. right at the end of school, like, we'd mm -hmm. walk by all, like, the Guido dance clubs. Were they killing it in there, cocaine? It shit? was just weird. Like, yeah. I'd be 17 and, like, just eating cheese fries and watching them all line up and be like, how do you wake up? And you're like, this is me. <laughs> this is what I'm about. It, it was fascinating. Where's my gold chain, 14 carat? I had one. But I also like Guido's passion for stuff. Like, what, okay. Like, that? laundry, gym, tanning, partying, you know. <laughs> and I met my husband, he's, he's Scottish, and just like how Scottish people are, they're Talk like, about it. they're like Guidos. What? They get like real, they're just like, they get fucked up, and they're <laughs> in it, and it's like, you know, so we always say like, instead of like getting like Guido trashed, I don't drink anymore, but like, we'd be like, yo, that person was Guido trashed. Or like, mm -hmm. now it's like, yo, those people are Scottish people fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> They're like very much the it. same. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh my God. In spirit. Oh man. Texture, man. Bro, don't Hell yeah. judge No, I'm not at all. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. trying. I'm but, trying. I mean, dude, it's bitching. Do you like Nerdous, it? I said that word. Ryan. Internet canceled. What? Wow. One time I made out with a DJ called DJ Rising Sun. 
Wow. How old, when was yeah. this? That's your, a moment. Huh? Are you showing anybody I'm going to say <laughs> it was like 2020. <laughs> Whoa, sick. Yeah. That's tight. He's a great dancer. I'm trying to make out with a dude. <laughs> now, here's the funny thing about that. Here's the funny thing about that. If I laugh about that, I'm a homophobic person. But something in that, whether it's societal or whatever it is, causes us to laugh. Because it's in, it's in this odd context of feeling somewhat free and hoping that the people that are listening aren't automatically going to be so offended that there's no redemption or there's no end. There's no, like, there's no like new beginning. Do you see what I'm saying in that? Mm -hmm. And I understand that, it, that that could be offensive. And I'm, maybe it is to some people in here. But I think, and I just got on one. Like, I think what's missing in this is like the redemption piece. And so we just cancel everybody. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm like, I'm trying to understand where the hell that redemption is if someone says something out of, even if it's, even if it's anger, if it's hate, rage, where is the redemption for that person? Moving on. Derek Webb. No, why should we move on from that? That's a powerful okay, topic. Okay, go for it. I think, Ryan, that, if, yes, that when we create a society where mm -hmm. we're scared to talk about how we actually feel mm -hmm. and that we, like, shut everyone Repression. down. Repression, yes. Yeah, for how, for how they actually feel, then mm -hmm. how can they ever correct yeah, you're right. yeah, the you're wrongs totally right. that are happening? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I like, do. I had, today I had a real internet war with somebody. Not internet war. I had a guy who I know. I posted a video and he was like, said some shit about me being perky and I was like fuck you what's wrong with perky you Dude. are kinda does that make you mad what's wrong with that it made me very mad why cause perky ladies y'all no fucking know I feel perky I'm not mad no he God meant damn. perky ass titties oh my god I was gonna say I only like perky okay. if you're talking about it, and I think that's okay Okay. I, I don't even take it there you're cancelled no <laughs> I don't mean to get super feminist I'm not trying to like push an agenda because yeah. because there are positive and fuck, perky titties are positive too. But I'm just it. saying, uh, this was like, you know, a dude who I wasn't trying to fucking smash. And so <laughs> it was just, it came oh, off. Lord. It was also like, I was just kind of like, this is some like gr brilliant shit that I posted. And like, all mm -hmm. you can think about is like some hard nips. Like, come on, bro. You know? Yeah. Anyways, all that to say that like, because I knew him, I called him out and I, mm. I we had a personal conversation about it. And nice. I was very open about like, hey dude, like I'm, like women shouldn't have to women shouldn't have to constantly fight against the fact that they exist and they have boobs mm. and that and that, that gives everyone permission always or like even if you're pretty or if you're not pretty or whatever uh -huh. it kind of opens this door sometimes like someone will call you hot and you're uh -huh. like bro like knock it off and they're like but you're hot and you're like bro i'm also eight thousand other things so why are we fixated on like my perky titties you know mm. um and mm. anyways, I'm, I'm he didn't, he didn't duplicate, he like wasn't really understanding because his perspective was entirely from his reality, right? Okay. Which okay. I respect. That's, I got it, got it. Yeah, keep going. Right, like he was only thinking like, actually, like, I, like in my universe, this is a compliment and hey, Lenny Bruce and hey, this comedy and that comedy. Mm -hmm. And anyways, the bottom line without getting into the whole thing is we, we had a very respectful conversation about yep. it. Yep. And at and when it was all said and done, mm -hmm. I feel like I grew a little bit and he grew a little bit. Mm -hmm. And both of us were willing to like have that conversation and uh -huh. be like, hey, dude, let's have a respectful conversation about this and uh, talk about how we really feel. Can I ask you a question? Sure. So is it wrong to tell a woman that she is attractive or hot? Context is everything. Okay, tell me about the context. Describe it. Man. It's impossible. Uh, you want to run some scenarios by me? Uh, sure. It's also context and also every woman has a personal preference. Am I right, yes. ladies? Yes. Like, yeah. I can't say that what is my comfort zone totally. is the comfort zone and of every woman in this room. That's fucked up. And you expressed where you were within the context of the conversation and the video, right? Yeah. So I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, cool. So I'm curious if there are um, people out there, women, yeah. who that doesn't necessarily bother. Totally. Or do they exist? Definitely. Okay, I mean, so, I, I think so. Got I think it. so. Okay. For sure. So so the subjectivity on if something like that is wrong is such an abyss. And then we get caught, it becomes mimemic, and we, be caught in, we get caught in a meme of what we can say and what we can't say. Well, and hang on, hang on. Yeah, 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 and, yeah, 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 yeah. Also, sorry, 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 go, go. And also, I'm trying to fucking paint. 
<laughs> you came cool, up man. with this idea, bro. <laughs> I'm vibing though, man. Look at this friggin' Whoa, weird look. ass fucking. Is this what? cool? Cool. This is Thank beautiful. You. Thank you. Who That's said that? Fucking oh, gorge. Cool. Thank you. Oh my god, dude. Continue, you were riffing. Okay, I mean, okay, okay, okay. To the end. So I, I don't think that there is a way to, uh, other than open dialogue, there is not a way to protect anyone from, uh, there is not a way to protect women online 100% of the time. There's just not. And, and I, I don't think there is. Men There's either. not. I mean, you're right. You're right. And when you're a woman on the internet, you, there's, there's a cost of entry or there's and like, that sucks. yeah, it but, sucks. but we can bring about more of an awareness of like consent culture. We can mm -hmm. talk about it more. We can, I don't know. I was watching this whole documentary yesterday about how like in filmmaking, in many art forms, like, you know, like a couple of years ago, 90% of the box office films were directed by men, mm -hmm. um, et cetera, et cetera. There's a bunch of stats. So we just have to start having the conversations and like hearing women. Yeah, I agree. I'm getting super feminist. I'm no, I'm not, into it. It wasn't Keep even it my going. intention, You're but like, yeah. but I just think that like sometimes, sometimes when I call somebody out mm -hmm. on something because I do that, mm -hmm. then like the response that I get is like, well, that wasn't my intention. And I'm like, dude, like I need you. Oh, to it may hear. be unseen by that man. Yeah. It just might, but, but we know what we're doing. And sometimes when that happens, it's in a, it's, it's out of humor sometimes, but it really takes a, person who can accept that they might be wrong yeah to actually learn something well and also like where's your humor coming from i also think that just like consent is everything like mm -hmm. before you start talking about perky titties that's you know, subjective just, too god damn it's just well, subjective man to be like hey it's so can tough. i give you a compliment on your perky tits <laughs> <laughs> there you go hell yeah fair you know, fair like, that's awesome fair fair, fair. <laughs> but i think anyways i think that the bottom line is that we can start to open the door more by a willingness to communicate. Yeah, Like agreed, a willingness agreed. to receive, a willingness to confront, yep. a willingness to call out, a willingness to listen, sure. you know? Yeah, agreed. There you go. That's Thank my period that. on the end of my sentence. Derek Webb. <laughs> Shaboom. I want to talk to you for a second. Hey. What do you think about all that? Yo. Uh, what do I think about all that? <laughs> yep. Oh, I'm That's, so sorry. Uh, I'm so sorry. Can we hear him? That sounds like a mind, a mind feel, bro. Huh? Yeah. Can you turn Derek <laughs> No, uh, we should, Derek please, up? please. I talked about it. No, 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 I like it. Cool. I um, feel like I want to hear what guys think. Yeah, that's maybe incredible, I'm a, Thank Maybe you. I'm a bitch, you know what I mean? Maybe I'm just like, don't fucking talk about my tits, and maybe that's me being a cunt. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Like, why am I swearing so much tonight? <laughs> Derek Webb, I want to talk to you real quick. You, you, can, you can try, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm happily hiding out on the corner over here. You're in the corner. <laughs> See, it's funny because Brian was like, I don't want to be in the corner because that's the guy that gets looked at. All no, we the time. all wanted to hide in the middle. Like, nobody wants to be on the ends. I wanted you want to trade? be in the corner. N uh, n no. <laughs> it's too late now. It's too okay, late. Okay. <laughs> too late to I, I got a lot of problems to fix over here. No. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? No. Too late that's to no. That's <laughs> no. No. Not happening right up. Not happening. Oh my God. <laughs> Derek. <laughs> yes. Have you, okay, so I wrote in the description. It, 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 and you can correct me if this isn't accurate, but you haven't yet. It's not uh, right. That, I, whoa, hey, I see you as an insightful critic of the evangelical movement. Would you oh think boy. That, is that accurate? Here we go, here we go. Uh, is, is that, do you think that, is that accurate about you? Um, I, is this guy, yeah. I would say, yeah. I would say that, um, I am in as far as it is part of my story mm -hmm. and in as far as it's part of my history and uh, things that I have cared about mm -hmm. in, in my life mm -hmm. and, and I care about it like I care about family. Got it. Um, and and uh, uh, I think great criticism only comes from great love maybe. Wow. You know, if you don't give a shit about something, oh, you don't good. criticize it because... Yeah. What's yeah. the point? Well, who cares? Sure. Yeah. You know, if it's not yeah. meaningful to you or whatever. It's hitting something in, in us that yeah. brings stuff up for yeah. us. Yeah, that's yeah. beautiful. So I think I'm probably in as far as I am in my own crosshairs mm -hmm. of reflection. I think the evangelical church has wound up there a lot over the years. Got it. Yeah. Mostly because I identify as, or, or I identified as part of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you're coming at, in any time you have a group of people who identifies 
for very particular reasons. There's like a handful of things, like an AA meeting. Like we, yes. we're, we're all diverse, but we're all here. We all know there's one reason why we're here. Yeah. And we all know what it is, probably, as mm -hmm. we look around at each other. Um, and so whatever I'm coming after in myself ah, is yes. probably oh, common to yeah. the... Oh, well, there we no, go. I got a handshake genius. out of that. That's really beautiful. Um, yeah. Paul Hollywood. I, I, that's self-reflection. I'm into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. But yeah so, I'm way into so it. In a, so, yeah, it's not a question with a short answer, so I didn't try to give one. Great. But it's like, Thank you. So, yes. Okay. Uh, there. I, I could it. have just said. But, um, yeah, because, um, because you want to... Because I think a lot about my own behavior and my own failure and my ability to, to learn all the good stuff that comes out of failure. Mm -hmm. And I, it's like a thing I long for a little bit. For, but it's hard for a group of people who feel as though they have the market cornered on certainty. Ah, yeah, um, dude. Because <clears throat> how call. do you fail? How do you fail? Yeah, it's all totally. new revelation, but it's not. Um, yeah, so it's yes, tricky. It. It's a tricky business. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. From what I got from that is that when there is a group think, the group think trumps every other perception or, or thing that could be looked at differently than the group is looking at this one thing. Yeah. And I think then, that's it, true anywhere. I don't think yeah, that's unique to the church. I agree. Yep. So yep. it just like becomes, the thoughts become pathological and then it almost has yeah. like a cult um, uh, 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 personality to it a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Okay. yeah. And I, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I, and again, unfortunately, when you have people who, um, and I, I include myself because I've yeah, done yeah. this, I've made Love a living it. at it over some years. Yep. When, when, you, um, when there are moments of self-expression when you assign your words to uh, the objective, all-powerful, all-good, maker of all things mm -hmm. to whom we must be reconciled and all of those rules that are conventional and set up for us at some yes. point that we agreed to within ourselves to... That's where things get tricky. Absolutely. Is when the the group think begins to crystallize up high, and suddenly we mistake it for something coming down to us from a voice above. And I think that's like the church has had a really hard time. With I, that. I, I'm not quite understanding what you're that saying. That when enough with that. people C yep. think a thing, uh -huh. it starts to become the objective true thing Got that it. we've all received. When really it's just a thing we've convinced each other of, or we've agreed okay. to. Okay. Okay. Um, and I think that's what's tricky about, so here's a for instance. Yeah, please. There are here in this town a whole lot of people who mm -hmm. are in the business of making Christian stuff, yes. Christian goods and products and whatever. Yeah. And, uh, I, and my experience personally, and I'm uh -huh. not trying to call anybody out. Um, I mean, if somebody's called out as a result, then fantastic. But yeah. uh, in my experience, there are a lot of people, mm -hmm. maybe the majority of my friends who are <clears throat> even in the most conservative <clears throat> end of that work mm -hmm. would tell you personally one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one, mm -hmm. that they disagree probably with some of the big hallmarks of the thing oh ah, okay and so okay. here's a for instance like the way that the church has fumbled miserably with some response to the lgbtq community mm -hmm. in the world mm -hmm. that has been such an an unbelievable uh uh, fuck up with so much deep consequences that go in every direction. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of my friends who are in the, the work, who plow the fields of Christian products, yep. if you ask them, you talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, they, they will don't. tell you that they don't agree with that God, at all. Dog, and tough. they all wish that God would love their gay friends the way that they love their yeah. gay friends. Yeah. And so they're starting to make apologies on behalf of the God who is presumably all love or whatever. Yeah. But the point is, there's a point at which it's this weird disconnect where 85 to 90 percent of people who I've talked to about mm -hmm. it all seem to have one opinion, but that is not that is not somehow becoming the the narrative, the institutionalized narrative. Oh, interesting. Because I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, please do. Is that because for for uh, fear of yes, uh, just getting fear immediately chastised, yes. kicked out, uh, uh, looked at as like a like sure. a some kind of scrub within that group think sure like and just j harshly judged because they accept they're just accepting in general it's like it's like the one thing that no one's willing to say out loud but if yeah. anybody did it once it would be the whole congregation saying it copy that that goes for every type of group thing, yes it that's, seems that's like exactly like you right. mentioned and it also goes for to me it seems even feminism even e even uh, 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 Trumpers or people who are hard left, people who are hard, hard right. When the group takes over the individual, yeah. 
it's really fucking scary because we're made of all of these conflicting feelings and thoughts. So when we're boiled into a set of rules, we go fucking crazy. Have well, you I experienced think, that shit ever? Think, it's insane. It's I think crazy. Individuals making. is where you find genius, and groupthink is is like they all agree on their pain. They agree they, on their. They, they all agree on their pain. Individuals agree like the one thing that like that groups have in common is their shared pain. So they come. Check, check, check. Cool. Aaron, hit it. Um, well, okay, what was it again? My question is, how have you seen that affect the, the rules in that world of evangelicalism? How have you seen it affect your work? Oh, in yeah. Having to abide right, right, by right, these right, imposed right. rules. Yeah. So, um, it, I mean, my experience mm -hmm. anecdotally is that it was always just that. It was rules. Okay. And it was not, um, usually not authentically um, prioritized. You know, it was like, ooh, it ooh, was okay. imposed upon us. Uh -huh. And it limited, you know, what we could do. It limited, like your creativity and yeah. like even the thoughts about creativity. Yeah, okay. and it, I mean, and ultimately it made me disconnect from work I was doing oh, if I had shit. to okay. if I had to follow those rules and I couldn't be um, free to do you know to take the song wherever it, it wanted to go yeah are, are you felt, talking mostly lyrically yeah I mean mostly there okay. were times where even musically yeah oh no okay okay which that's that's even worse honestly but uh, but yeah I mean you know we, we used to have to uh, send the band. So a, a band would have to write out all their lyrics. God. And, and then even put a description and, you know, try to get Bible verses to line up with whatever they're... And get them approved. And send them to the bookstores before they would order their record. Oh, man. That's and uh, And, you know, these guys are just making shit up. They're just like, I, you know, I can make it about this or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Because it wasn't, you know. Damn it. Did so it, that's did, weird. Did it, <laughs> did it have, like, did you find yourself just getting depressed because you felt like you couldn't actually create the things you wanted? Yeah, sometimes. And it yeah. drove, I mean, but it was, a, it was something that drove me where I am now and uh -huh. made me who I am now. And, mm -hmm. you know, it sucked at the time, but it... Mm. You know, you can grow from that shit. God oh, damn. So. Right. Where do you feel like you are now? As far as like your, your, your I don't know, a spiritual practice or just an ontological practice of your way of being. Like, <laughs> like how, do you, how do you show up in that? <laughs> they do. <laughs> how, much how much time do we have? We got a little bit. We got we, we to gotta get to Lauren. Well, okay, so I could sum it up in saying that when I was, when I identified as an evangelical Christian, yeah. I spent a good chunk of my time trying to get away from here. F from yourself? Just he whatever was happening right now, I was trying to get away Excellent. from Excellent. Keep going. Yeah. And now my spiritual practice is to try to stay here, to try to be here as much as possible. Yeah. Like to be here right now. Yeah. As much yeah. as possible. And it, it, ch mm -hmm. it changed everything, you know. Is that, it, it, I, it, man, I don't know how much, I, I know you pretty deeply, it, it, especially in the, over the past month or so. Right. Um, and, man, I, I, for some reason I, I, I'm afraid to mention the program. Um, I, I, it, I think there's like an like a, uh, exposing that I'm afraid that, you won't like or something like that. Oh, you, that. Don't, it, you don't have to worry about that with okay, me. Okay, cool, yeah, cool, cool. I don't know what your thing is, but cool. I'm, I'm an open book Great. right here. Right can, you, can you tell us about your time in Alcoholics Anonymous? Yeah, well, I mean, okay. it, was, it was really useful for me for mm -hmm. a really long time. Yeah. Um, but then I ended up having a similar experience with that that I did with church, to be completely honest, where it... Um, there was a narrative. There's a narrative in in the recovery community, and if anyone's in it, and please don't be offended by what I'm about to say, I was in it for like 14 years, off and on. Wow, man. Wow. And uh, 
But there's this narrative where you're broken. You're, you identify as a, as a hopeless, powerless, broken thing. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, if that can keep you from getting drunk, then maybe that's cool. But I realized at one point that that wasn't even really why I was there. Why were you there? I was there to try to figure out how to be here. Fucking right. You know? Wow, dude. And like... That's so beautiful. <laughs> Holy mackerel. How wonderful. So eventually it didn't work for me anymore. Got it. Got it. Because the, narr like the, the narrative of, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to label myself as this powerless thing forever. Uh, yeah. And then hopefully that will That's fuck me up enough to not drink anymore. So um, there's, there's shame within shame with it. Is well, it, and that's how, how I experienced it because okay. of, I, of the trauma that I have from church and stuff like that. Yeah, so I, yeah. I really correlated the two. It felt similar to me. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, you could say fuck in there, which was different. Yep. But um, <laughs> other than that, it was similar. <laughs> uh, but Got it. Got it. Wow. You know, the more work I did outside of those rooms oh, with mm -hmm. like mindfulness and... Um, just exploring my whole deconstruction thing, um, yep, yep, I just yep. realized that 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 didn't line up. Like I came to a crossroads where that awesome. narrative didn't line up with where I was headed, so I had to walk away from it. Got it. And you and and do you feel like you're more yourself now that you're away from that? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I think the elimination of a lot of this stuff is just a progression that I'm it's it's my story I'm going down that road and uh -huh. it's sort of like you know sloughing off that stuff yeah. and and leaving uh you know less I guess less is what I'm looking for you know oh that's good dude thank you yeah thank you mm. Lauren yeah how are you Doing good. How are you? Good. You're painting a beautiful painting. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Just having a good time over it's here. It's wonderful. It just, it 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 kind of reflects. I mean, it's just your Looks personality. Like my house, right? Yeah, that too. <laughs> Man, Lauren, how long have you lived in Nashville? My whole life. That's I'm from right here. On. Anybody else from here? Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. Ryan. <laughs> Ryan's old school. Hell yeah. And I don't mean old. I just mean. <laughs> He's, he's 40. That ain't, okay. That ain't shit. <laughs> Sorry, Maddie. If that's um, old, I'm fucked. Lauren, tell us, tell us, um, tell us about what you do. Uh, I am a professional tailor. Mm -hmm. I make clothes. Badass. I alter clothes. I refashion clothes, and I teach people how to do it when I'm not doing it out of a shop or mm -hmm. out of my home. Cool. How long have you been doing that? Been sewing my whole life. Mm -hmm. um, been doing it professionally for, I don't know, like six or seven years. Cool. I don't know. That's great. <laughs> I worked in advertising before that. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. What did you do in advertising? Shit. Uh, yeah. My job title was traffic manager. Well, uh, uh, so I got a lot of really weird jokes about that. Let's hear them. <laughs> I was just like, what do you sit and direct traffic in the parking lot and like stupid <laughs> shit like that? What, um, kind of, what kind of person makes that joke? A traffic manager is somebody who handles all of the media. Oh, what, okay. what, is the, what is even the word I'm looking for? Each time slot is like worth a certain, certain number of points. So as a right. traffic manager, it was my job to like figure out how many time slots of what that they could buy to add up so that it was the same amount of points. Oh, okay. It's a lot of math. I think I don't understand. It, it's hard to explain. I thought it was really fun. I actually no, really, that's cool. really liked it. I, I, I want to understand, though. Yeah. You're fucking cool. Excuse me. Man. Lauren, we used to go to IndyNet. Yeah, we did. And... Uh, I will be, if you guys don't know what IndyNet is, it was, it was a place down on Church Street um, that's now called Canvas, I think. And there used to be punk and hardcore shows in there and it was just a dive, but it was the shit. It was, it great, was the shit, man. Great place. And like, we just saw so many cool bands in there. Um, but I don't know where I was going with that. Lauren, I'm trying to engage you. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time engaging you in conversation for some reason. So I'm just going to stand over here next Why? to you. Why? Am I just not fun to no, talk to? No, 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 no. To? I think I'm just dry right now. I feel like I can't get it. I can't get into it. Okay. Um, tell me about, I'm really struggling. 
It's not you. You're doing great. It's not you, it's me. Um, Why don't you work in advertising anymore? God, thanks, dude. <laughs> I want to lay down. Thank you very much. Because I didn't like it. It felt, it felt incongruent with how I was as a person overall. Yeah. I worked for a decent ad agency that was very, very small, mm -hmm. but our main client was McDonald's. And I don't think McDonald's is the most evil business mm -hmm. in the world, mm -hmm. but I also don't think they're the most pure. Yeah, right. Um, that double G, no onion, extra pickles, man. Can't even deal yeah, with it. Yeah, it just felt kind of weird ah. to be, to be like kind of sitting there and like shit. pushing this, promoting this company that I didn't feel like their values really aligned with mine. Yeah. And then beyond that too, as a, as a tailor, mm -hmm. now I'm a tailor. I was just a hobby seamstress back then, but I thought I should be doing something with all this time that I have in the day that's mm -hmm. not just wasting away at a desk. Can you tell us about your ayahuasca trips? <laughs> what do you want to know about them? I want to know everything. There you go, Maddie. Hell yeah. <laughs> I, want <laughs> I want to know all for real. Okay. Talk about it. So I've done it. And why did you do it? I've, I've done it six times Jeez, now. Jeez, oh fucking poots, that's cool. Um, the first... Hey dude, how are you? Good to see you. Four Good. times were in... You're taller than I thought you were. That's cool. Peru. Yep. In Whoa. the Amazon rainforest. That's cool. Under a, sh a Peruvian shaman. Um, I went in 2015, right before I turned 30. Good. With my Good. best friend and... Um, we just thought it would be like a weird thing to do together yeah, for our 30th that's cool. birthday. So we were like, okay, why not? Changed my life. Whoa. How? <laughs> Completely. Like how? I went home and like dumped my like long-term boyfriend and get the fuck like, out of here, man. Just like, I don't know. I just like completely, like completely rerouted my brain. That's no cool. way. I was like, oh my God. And then I like kind of hobbled off of that for a while. And then I did it again at the very end of 2019 because mm -hmm. I was struggling really, really, really bad with depression. My dad died in that time frame God, between the no. first time I did it and the second time I did it. And I couldn't like, I just couldn't like become a, like Keep normal paying. again yeah. after that. Yeah. Um, so I went this time to Florida and I did it twice mm -hmm. and it, actually gave me a much more profound experience than the first time I did it. Mm. Maybe because my brain was already open to it. I don't know. Um, mm. Mm. But I, I think like, I don't know how else to describe this, but like, you know when you were like a little kid and how your personality was and how you were like just kind of open to whatever and you weren't afraid of failing and everything was like fun and fresh and new. You're and like you here. Get, yeah, and then you get older and the world kind of like punches you down into the floor and you just yeah. become like a different person. Yeah. I reverted back to the childlike state of like uh. that, that mental state of like everything is fresh and new and like. And that stuck, that stuck with you or it like it and still does? Yeah. Really? Yeah. That is it like amazing. cleaned out all the cobwebs of like the last decade of my life where wow. I just like, I don't know, I guess it wasn't just my dad it was like everything but the dad my dad was like the final yep. straw mm. i guess mm. yeah um so yeah it, it did a lot for me i wouldn't say that it's necessarily for everybody cool <laughs> so that's three times though and then all the times after that i want to I know about that maddie <laughs> you said well, peru and then two times in florida right yeah well twice in the same weekend and then four <clears throat> times in a week Oh, four times in one week. Yes. Wow. That's commitment. <laughs> How much water did you drink? You're not allowed to drink water when you do it. Fuck, Dude. I didn't, I didn't know that. Because you vomit. Oh, man. So they won't let you, like, hey, when you, like, Can I tell you a story like about vomiting? Yes. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so um, my son got sick maybe, like, a year ago, and he was, he was throwing up, and, and um, I... Uh, at, at, at like midnight, I woke up and I was like, whew, you know, when you, it's hitting and your mouth's kind of wet and hot and sweaty and you just, you're like, fuck, Gross. it's coming up. <laughs> so, so I went in the bathroom and I'm sitting on the toilet, sitting on the toilet. <laughs> And I, you know, you're just kind of, you're, you're, you just, you're just like, come on, man. Either. Were you hugging the bitch? Were no, you, like, I was sitting on the toilet because I, I could. Derek, that is badass, dude. No, Holy shit, man. What, 
well, don't interrupt your story, for God's sake. Just to... <laughs> we'll come back. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hell yeah. So I was sitting there, and um, I'm, like, rocking back and forth on the toilet, like, just like, come on, man. Uh, just get it over with, you know? So I stood up. You know, it's like you feel like you're going to faint and shit gets hot. And I, like, open the, the shower. I live behind James here in an old barn that we renovated. And I'm really grateful for that. Thank you. Um, and it's badass. And I have my studio on the bottom. Point being, um, I opened the shower and it just ripped. Okay. I like throwing up. <laughs> here we go. Because I don't throw up a lot. So when I throw up, as I'm throwing up, I'm like, wow, this is fucking beautiful. Because I do, <laughs> do you see, do you see, can you get on that vibe at all? No. Be, okay, cool. I've thrown up and it was beautiful before. Say it again. I've thrown up and it was beautiful before. But it could, tell us about it. Tell us how it was beautiful. It was like rainbows. Okay, okay. Did you eat like Fruit Loops or were you fucking? No, I was on Ayahuasca. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you don't, you don't like, you don't throw up a lot. So wait, it's like. You, wait, you wait. I, hold on, Donaldson. But you, so you're like, Ugh! no, 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 no. Ugh! No. Like, is that what's happening? It wasn't like that. It was, it was like, it was coming out, and I was like, I was like, I experienced the feeling of throwing up in a really good way because I was like, this is something that I don't get to engage in very often is throwing up. So I feel you on you know? this. Cool. Yeah. Tell me about it. A few times that I puke, I'm like, all right, this is a rush. Yeah, it really you know, fucking is. So I don't is. let myself get stressed about it. Absolutely. And as it's happening, it's quick usually. So it's just like, it's like I got to observe my, I got to observe myself puking and it wasn't so damn bad. It was like, wow, this could be really beautiful. Wait, I don't know, whatever. Fuck. I'm not in I was about to say, fuck y'all, man. No, I'm playing. No, it's cool. It's cool. cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's fucking great. No, I appreciate it. I appreciate when it. When I'm barfing, it's not like that. You don't like that? Or it's not? It comes out of my mouth and my nose. We're and talking about barfing. And then my eye, it's, it's like, it's usually very prolonged. Cool. I don't barf very much. I barf like once every 10 years and it's just fucking awful. Got it. It's not, it's not so the not coolest like, I'm thing. I'm in awe, but like, I, but I love that for you. Like legitimately love that for you that you can vomit. You can be fucking vomiting <laughs> and like observing it and being like, man, life, bro. Like that's, <laughs> that's evolved. I'm not like, I'm not. Uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> no, I really, that nothing. sounds like I'm being like ironic, but I'm actually really yeah. doing that. Thank you. <laughs> like, Thank that's, you. Some, that's fucking cool. <laughs> oh, my you goodness. You should be careful, though. About barf, tell us. Uh, the, with the, with the barfing is beautiful thing. Yes. This <laughs> reminded me of. Uh, the, <laughs> that's a good t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it reminded me of there was this girl that uh, I waitressed with when I was in college. Yes, yes. And yes. I came back a year later, and she was all different. Like she had dreads and she was like, I'm married and me and my husband are making art together and I made a, a bird's nest out of his pubes and you got to see it. <laughs> she's like, <laughs> she's like, you got to see it. You're going to shit your pants. Oh yeah. You're going to shit like your pants. Kind of oh, and I was yeah. like, I don't want to. Like, yeah, right. So did she show you? No, I didn't want to see it okay, after tight. that. Like it was so intense, and I was like, "These are all the things I don't want to do." Oh my god! So yeah. So you're like, don't ever be like, "You got to see my painting. It'll make you puke, and it'll be beautiful." <laughs> <laughs> do you think god. you can make a sweater out of pubes? Out of pubes? Oh, I saw should, TikTok one time. Asking. I only say this. This is an evolved. Con hey, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is an evolved conversation. Ah. Uh, no one talks about this shit very often. I, I just, just want to tell you. I saw a TikTok where this chick made. Uh, she made yarn out of a cat, and I and yarn it was cool cat. and it was pretty. I just wonder, can you make yarn out of anything? I think as as a knitter. Ooh. Oh actually, yeah. yes, textiles. Tell us. Hit I it. think that. Um, Pube hairs are going to be too short to okay. effectively twist into the fiber to create the yarn to be able to knit it. Yeah. And then even if you weren't. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Long Pubes over there. <laughs> even if you were I able to. I was just going to say that. Twist same thing. it into yarn, they would still be so short that it would pill over time, so it wouldn't be. A, it wouldn't have longevity as a sweater. I'm, cool. I'm, Done. I'm very yeah. thankful for Done. that because. I didn't ask because I want pube yarn. I just asked because of my, I'm being, you know, curious. You're curious you're, about you remember it. remember the half circle? He said, we were in a half circle upstairs before the show. We were. And, yeah, and Ryan was like, curiosity and exploration and doors within doors. So I'm just, 
I'm just You're going opening there. the fucking door, bro. I do appreciate that. <laughs> I do appreciate that. The pubic hair, the pubic hair yarn door was there, and I was like, "What's back here?" <laughs> Apparently, nothing. <laughs> ah, Ryan, Ryan, what do you think about this conversation right now? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not listening to it. Really. You're not listening to it? <laughs> He's like, I'm zoning in. <laughs> Maddie, what about you? Oh, I don't know. I definitely didn't think we'd get to this conversation today. Wait, Nobody likes again? pubic hair. It's gross. Like, you know when you I go to a public bathroom and there's a pubic nice. hair just God. sitting God. on the toilet? It's gross. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> hey, Ryan. Yes, sir. $30 well Can spent. I not, don't not hassle me, Sprinkle. What? <laughs> not, not to intentionally... Uh, yes. Bring us in a non sequitur, but no, thank you. No, do it. So please <laughs> take you, us away dude. from no, the thank yeah. you. Let me let me tell you the thing I love about you and about oh, this. Okay, cool. And that That's is good. that mm -hmm. there is nothing more fascinating to me mm -hmm. than getting. This is what you do. This is what Make Perfect's about. Okay. You take somebody who you're interested in, so mm -hmm. is good at something. Yep. And you talk to them about it while they're doing something they're not good at, and it gets them off their rhythm, and it, you don't know, and it, you, it, you have no idea where you're going to go as a result. Cool. Because most of us, or some of us, I mean, Aaron and I were talking about this earlier. Mm -hmm. Like, in 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 our minds, if you talk a lot about your work or mm -hmm. your process, or whatever, you tend to kind of become a jukebox, and, it, and somebody asks you a question, it just grabs that disc ah, and you yeah, just drops totally, it on, yeah. and you just, it's yeah, like yeah, a yeah. thing. You just right. And it's not possible to do here when you're doing this. Cool. And, and I couldn't do it when during my time Hell with yeah. you and. And that and that's why we're talking about like pube sweaters. <laughs> Is because when you get us painting and talking at the same time, yeah. it's like that weird that filter mechanism or the, even just the the organizational mechanism that mm -hmm. is the, everything passes through. It's just occupied. Yeah, copy. And so that's that's oh, that's, that's cool, why dude. this is amazing. This is why a conversation that will happen under no other circumstances. Yeah. And is happening nowhere else in Nashville tonight. <laughs> and right, so right. you're welcome. In other yeah, words, thank uh, you and thank you, thank Ryan. You. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. For no matter that. what comes out, the machine works, cool. and it's beautiful. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sweaters. There we go. Drink I, it up. I, I can. I can actually. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you. You have it. Thank you. Yeah. I um. It's kind of like hot ones, but with no. you. That's what I said, yeah. Derek. Oh, you did? Yeah. I did not catch that. Yo, hot one, Luke. You said that a lot. Where the hell? Oh, yes, I always I'm always like Luke. You're floating around in space. <laughs> like you're you're looking at me from a from afar. Um, you said that a long time ago about um, about hot ones and make it perfect. Kind of being like that a little bit. Did you say that hot ones and make it perfect? Yeah, kind of being like that. I think yeah. I told I think, you I hot, hot ones. ones. Mm -hmm. I think that the hot ones thing. Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. want to. Did wanna, you mention that too? My, that's what my dad calls taking a shit. Yeah, but hell yeah. Not to keep it in the zone. You got a zone, monster coming out of there, you know what I mean? I think that was me. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cool. But yeah, Hot Ones was early kind of inspiration for Make It Perfect. For sure. Just kind of the interview style and stuff. Man, I remember when we were figuring this shit out. You're a badass. You're a badass. Hell yeah. Oh, that was sprinkled. I knew it!